It's been one month since the Pokemon Sword and Shield Direct where we learned about Dynamaxing, Raid Battles, and so much more. But obviously we don't know everything and there's still plenty of characters, Pokemon, and gameplay mechanics to discover. And that's the focus of the latest Sword and Shield trailer, which primarily introduces the world to the idea of Gigantamaxing. It's like Dynamaxing, except the Pokemon changes their form and gets an exclusive move. But there are a lot of details in this trailer that you might not have picked up on beyond what was clearly shown. Luckily, that's why we have the old analysis machine. So let's see what secrets and hidden details are waiting to be found. While Gigantamaxing is obviously the biggest new aspect introduced in this trailer, there's something else we're much more intrigued about, the Gym Challenge. While previously we had seen just how much of a spectacle gyms were in Galar compared to previous regions, this time we have a better idea of what makes them unique. And it all comes down to a single man, Rose, the chairman of the Galar Pokemon League and a position we've never had mentioned in Pokemon. But even beyond that, he's the president of a large business conglomerate, which might explain why things are so different in Galar. For one, not just any trainer can enter the gym challenge. While the participants still have to collect eight gym badges, they first must be endorsed by a specific person such as a gym leader or the champion himself, as is the case for both you and Hop. Leon gives you a letter of endorsement that kicks off your journey. We may even see this during the Japanese trailer where he's talking to both you and Hop at Hop's house, or during the new scene at Professor Magnolia's where she can be seen in the background while you and Hop excitedly talk in front of Leon. Maybe it's the encounter here that makes him decide to give the endorsement. But here's where things look to be quite different, even beyond the endorsements. In addition to the gym challenge, there's the Champion Cup. This is an annual tournament to decide who will be able to challenge the reigning champion, in this case Leon, for their seat. It's only open to the most exemplary trainers throughout the region, such as those who complete the gym challenge. So it looks like the Pokemon League is more of a tournament than facing off against an Elite Four before the champion. At least, that's the way it seems. The trailer actually begins with fireworks being set off above a stadium as the player walks onto the field with other trainers, all of whom are in the gym challenge uniform. As the player looks around in amazement, we get a better look at a few of the other trainers. There's a blonde boy ahead of him, then Hop, another boy with green hair behind him, and finally a girl with her hair parted to one side. The website has talked in the past about the rivals you'll face in the Galar region. It's possible that these trainers are the ones it was referring to. Like you, they're preparing to face the gym challenge. Oh, and we should note that the trainer's number is 78 this time, once again marking the release date of the trailer. Based on all of this information, we believe this ceremony marks the beginning of the Champion Cup. In a certain amount of time, Leon will take on new challengers once again, while Chamberlain Rose introduces the new trainers that will take on the Gym Challenge. And there's enough evidence here to show that this sequence takes place in the Steam City's Gym. Multiple times we can see brick buildings in the background, and this is the first major city that the player arrives in. The big question though is whether this stadium hosts its own gym leader. We've yet to see one associated with this city, so it's likely that the leader just hasn't been introduced yet. But it is possible that there just isn't a gym leader to face here, at least not yet. Instead, the focus is on Chairman Rose. There are multiple scenes dedicated to him talking to the crowd, and while we don't know what he's saying, what's happening around him has us intrigued. At one point, he casually tosses out a Pokeball. This serves as a transition for the trailer, but the actual scene might be more of a reference to the professor's introductions in previous generations. Is it possible that the game begins with Rose announcing the Champion Cup on TV before transitioning to the player's point of view as they watch? It could just be a callback, but it would be a big way to introduce the world. However, the process of choosing your name, gender, and skin tone would be quite a bit different as Rose would obviously not be talking directly to you. So it likely only serves as a sly nod. Speaking of that Pokeball, we actually get a small glimpse of what may be inside of it. Just before the transition, there's a small four-legged Pokemon with a long neck. The main colors are orange and black, meaning this could be a new giraffe-like Pokemon. Or maybe that's an elephant's trunk? We're really not sure, but this is a brief look at another Pokemon in the game. That isn't the only intriguing part of this scene though, as the background displays the London-based city on the screen. We've wondered for a while where the final battle might take place, and this provides a solid clue. 
Now, at first, you might think this implicates that city as the location of the Champion Battle, but we don't think so. Instead, we believe that this is where the Champion Cup Tournament takes place. This decides who will face off against Leon, and that battle will take place in the highest tower of the Fortress City for all of Galar to see. Now, it could all take place in the same location, but we really think that Central City has some importance and a tie to the Champion. Continuing on to another part of Rose's speech, we can actually get a better look at the pin on his jacket. After zooming in, we see that it's in the shape of a hexagon, with two more hexagons crossing each other in the center. This likely has some kind of connection to the conglomerate that Rose runs as Oleana, his vice president and secretary, also has earrings in the shape of a hexagon. But there are even more connections between the two, as the symbol on Oleana's necklace is the same that's on Rose's earring. This is a wholly different symbol from his pin though, and we're not exactly sure what it means. We don't recognize anything about it yet. It's not just Rose and Oleana at this stadium though, as Leon appears in front of the crowd at one point. And based on his positioning and a screenshot from the official website, we believe he's putting on an exhibition match to kick off the Champion Cup. His opponent is named Raihan, though we never actually see him but we suspect that this match takes place after Rose's speech and will serve to demonstrate how strong Leon really is. Now, a gym battle could take place after that, or perhaps the trainers will get to choose where they head next, whether it's toward Milo or Nessa's gym. It's not confirmed, but we do wonder if there'll be some manner of freedom to where the player goes. Maybe after defeating those two, the player returns to the Steam City to finally challenge its gym leader. It's hard to say for sure. Before moving on, we see a little more of Rose, Oleana, and Leon in the Japanese trailer. But rather than the center of the stadium, it seems Leon and Rose are in the entryway. We can see a desk at the front while an official is guarding a door. But even more interesting is the map in the background showing the layout of the stadium as well as the classic statues that have always been situated at the entrances to past gyms. The brickwork once again makes us think of the Steam City, and it's possible that this gym is fire-focused based on the red carpeting in front of the desk. However, we still don't know if this conversation with Rose takes place before or after the ceremony. And that goes for this other strange scene as well. Here, Rose and Oleana seem to be in a fancy restaurant, except Rose is seemingly in disguise. He's changed out of his suit, put on glasses, and now wears a hat. That hat still has the hexagonal symbol we mentioned before, so between that and Oleana behind him, we're not sure if this is the best disguise, if he's even trying to hide in the first place. And with all the blue around him, we wonder if this restaurant is near the water gym. Will he take some kind of interest in the player? He was the one to initially endorse Leon when he went on his journey, so maybe he sees the same talent in you or Hop. This trailer introduced more than just a Champion Cup, though. We also got our first look at two new gym leaders. The first is the fighting leader, Bea, while the other is the ghost leader, Alistair. And significantly, they're version-exclusive gym leaders. Bea is only fought in Pokemon Sword, while Alistair is battled in Pokemon Shield. That said, their gyms are in the exact same town, something that's emphasized even more in the Japanese trailer. The only major difference from the outside is the colors and symbols, but thanks to the area surrounding the gym, we can see that this is the town northwest of the Fortress City. It's surrounded by water, and we can see the painted mural in the background. And a new detail shows pillars near the stairs that are made to look like clay doll, so it's likely in the game as well. Now, thanks to their type specialities, Bea and Alistair are obviously not exactly the same. One of Bea's Pokemon is Hitmontop, while Alistair uses Mimikyu, appropriately enough coming from a Dusk Ball. Now, what's interesting is that Bea's design is a little closer to Nessa's in that she's definitely more sporty, owing to her abilities as a martial artist. But Alistair is similar to Milo in that their uniforms are a little more elaborate and they carry six Pokeballs, even using the same triangular device at their hips. So is that a requirement for the male trainers? We're not sure, but we did want to note that the numbers on Bea and Alistair's uniforms are different as well. She is 193, while he is 291. Again, though, we're not sure what these mean for the gym leaders. Their stadiums also feature new ads. One has Impidimp as part of it. We don't know what it's selling, but it's giving a thumbs up, so it must be good, right? 
The Go Stadium features an ad for a camera at one point, but there's no indication that there will be a photo mode. There could be, but we doubt it'll be connected to this ad if so. That showcases a traditional camera, while we know the player will have a Rotom phone. So yeah, we'd expect Rotom to take care of the pictures for us. The ad that has us the most intrigued, though, is behind Bea as she walks into the stadium. We can see an ad with a symbol in the shape of a C that also resembles a planetary map. In the center is a wrench. This is actually the second time we've seen this symbol. In the direct trailer, there's a scene of the Fortress City where we saw the exact same symbol. The only difference is that train tracks were in the center then. So this looks to be one giant company dealing with mechanics across Galar. And it must have some kind of role if it even has a building. But what could that be? We don't think this is the same conglomerate that Rose owns, as the symbols are different, but perhaps he does. After all, the Coca-Cola company owns more than 500 brands, including ones you wouldn't think, like Nestle. So it's not that far out of the realm of possibility. In addition to the new gems, we also see a little more of the previous gems and some of what we could expect. For one, the Japanese trailer shows that the gym trainers will also dress in uniforms based on their gyms. We get a good look at the grass uniform and how it resembles Milo's own outfit. Soon after, we then see the water gym does indeed feature the same type of puzzle that was featured in the E3 demo, but the trainers are different. There's a girl on the right side wearing the water gym uniform, and again, it resembles Nessa's. It's a neat touch to show how these trainers really are a part of the gyms. The Japanese trailer also revealed a few more scenes beyond the gyms. The first features more of the surrounding area near the grass town. There's not a lot to point out beyond what we've seen already, but it does provide a sense of scale. It also shows that Pumpkaboo will be catchable in this area, and the different size variations that are unique to it will be represented before entering a battle, which will definitely be helpful. This is also the area where Yamper can be encountered. Meanwhile, the new Pokémon, Duraludon, is found in the snowy areas to the northeast. This also shows the returning Timer Ball, which is used to catch it. Slightly more interesting than that is our first real look at the Water Gym Town. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot to say, as it only shows nondescript buildings with the gym in the background. The final area we see is near the Fighting or Ghost Gym Town. We can see the walls of the Fortress City on the right side, and this general area is reflected on the map. It's also a more vertical location, necessitating the ladders. And did you spot the Maractus in the grass? That's another returning Pokémon in the game. Now, we didn't talk much about the Gigantamaxing, and that's because there really isn't a whole lot to say. Everything about it has been laid out thanks to the trailers and the official website. But there is one thing that has us curious. There's a new image on the website that features an extra band around the trainer's wrist. We wondered if this could be the key to Gigantamaxing, but that seems unlikely. The process is shown during the trailer, and it's the normal Dynamax band that activates this. Besides, the artwork shows the battle against Milo, which seems too soon for Gigantamaxing. Yet that still leaves us wondering what the black band could be for. But we're positive that question will be answered as Pokémon Sword and Shield nears its November release. The significance of Chairman Rose and the Champion Cup has interesting implications for the endgame of the Galar region. We can't wait to see what secrets are left to be shown and what new Pokémon we'll meet next. But that's everything we could find in the latest trailer for Pokémon Sword and Shield. Of course, let us know if we missed anything in the comments. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more on Pokémon and other things gaming.